So um, your first company was Funbug. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, it, I started Funbug when I was 24. And uh, as mentioned, uh, when I was 22, uh, recently after graduating college, I decided I wanted to, to make it as an entrepreneur. And I'll, I'll tell you a secret as to why I uh, first thought of becoming an entrepreneur was, um, again, my passion for surfing. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in life was surf with my friends. And as I looked forward, uh, tried to vision the rest of my life, I thought, well, if I love surfing with my friends so much, maybe the only thing that's better than this is surfing with my family. And I have this dream of being able to surf with my children every day after school. I can go pick them up from school and take them surfing. And this was literally my most powerful motivation for becoming an entrepreneur was that I figured, well, if I want to have that schedule, I better own my own business right, so that I can, I can do that. Um, and I always try to imagine myself um, as a 90-year-old man looking back on my life uh, because it makes it easy to uh, commit yourself to things. Because if you have a very long-term vision of your life, uh, some things that seem maybe like a big commitment, like when you're 22 saying you're going to give yourself until the age of 30 to make it as an entrepreneur, that, that becomes a more uh, doable uh, thing, uh, easier to digest and accept. So when I imagine myself as 90 looking back, how would I feel that as a young man I committed to succeeding as an entrepreneur, giving myself eight years to do it, that felt like the right thing to do. Um, and so at 22 I started to think about maybe what would be a good business opportunity. Uh, didn't come up with anything until I was 24. Started Funbug, which was an online social gaming platform. Um, you played retro games online and, and you could, uh, uh, there was a social element to it. It was 1999. We were ahead of our time. If it was in the era of Facebook, we would have been very successful, but I'm, I'm happy with, with what's, uh, what's <laughs> transpired with GoPro. So, but my failure was very painful. Um, we grow, grew to be a small business, 17 employees. Um, uh, I was very passionate about the product. But I didn't connect the dots on how to turn the product into a profitable company. And in 1999, profits were not so important. It was more about a driving engagement and getting a lot of people to come to your website and then figure out how to make money later. And so I raised $4 million of investor money, built a fabulous platform for the three peak months of operation. Um, <laughs> GoPro was, oh, sorry, Funbug was the uh, fourth most addictive web property, no, seventh most addictive web property, second most addictive web property, and then fourth most addictive web property on time spent on site per month. People were spending 15 hours a month on the site, and that was very good back in uh, the year 2000. Um, but it wasn't enough, and um, we ran out of money had to close the business, and that was the most traumatic thing that had ever happened to me because it was the first time in life that I really failed at something significant. And when it wasn't just about me, I lost $4 million of other people's money, people that really believed in me. And it took me a little while to recover. Um, but if that hadn't happened, it would have never taught me the lessons and led me uh, to taking that surf trip, um, which led to the idea for GoPro. So we've, we've been discussing also how uh, the, the process of, of uh, getting an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things Tina was saying this morning uh, was that engagement often comes before imagination. Um, so it's, it's when you interact mm -hmm. uh, with uh, other people or with other cultures or, or with... Uh, and you sort of used uh, that technique <laughs> yeah. um, without maybe being so... Um, uh, on purpose. Yeah. That's, that's sort of what came out of it. But you were, you were now after Funbug and you didn't know exactly what to do, right? Or did you have a clear... No, view? I had no idea. So I spent six months uh, after uh, closing down the business and, and failing. And it's important also you recognize that when you fail in business, you failed. The business didn't fail. You failed. And it's important to embrace that and to have self-awareness about that because then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what did I fail at? 
what do I need to, to change the next time? And what I realized was that I wasn't passionate about the business in the way that I really should have been. There were, I was passionate about the product, but I wasn't passionate about the business that I needed to build around the product to make it profitable. And that was really you know, uh, eye-opening for me. And that uh, I knew that the next time I would start a business, now I was 26, I had four years left on the clock, no idea what to do next. Um, and I, but I did know that I was going to bootstrap it, not borrow anybody else's money, uh, but that I was going to try to find something that I was p totally passionate about uh, uh, across the whole business uh, so that I could really do something significant and succeed. But having no idea what to do after six months of, I call it contemplating my navel, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of something sitting in a room is not an easy thing to do. I decided to uh, go and uh, pursue my passion for surfing because I'm a big believer that um, when you're engaged in your passion, when you're pursuing what you're most interested in life, you're most turned on. So it was a conscious choice. It was a conscious choice. You wanted choice. to get an idea through your... Yeah, uh, that I, I knew that if I was traveling, uh, in this case, around Australia and Indonesia surfing, that I would be very stimulated, that I would be meeting people that would um, uh, inspire me. And for all of us who've traveled, you know that when you're on the road, it's fabulously stimulating. Different cultures, different foods, different smells and sounds. And this really turns your brain on. Uh, but the irony for me is that I had the idea for GoPro before I even left for the trip. So in preparing for the trip, I thought this is going to be the surf trip of a lifetime. I may never have a trip like this again. And I want to document my experience from the water. Let's capture photos at the time, video wasn't in vogue. Capture photos from my perspective as a surfer. And there was no camera that allowed you to do that. So in the weeks leading up to the trip, I fashioned a uh, prototype wrist harness that would allow me to surf with a disposable camera on my wrist. And it worked so well that the light bulb went off and I thought, wow, I think this is my big idea. And the irony is at the time I thought, there must be so many other surfers in the world that would want something like this. And it's ironic because the surf market is very small. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. But, but to, be, to, be, to be honest, I just wanted GoPro originally to be a small family business that would allow me to uh, surf and, and travel and build a business around that passion, I had no idea that it would one day become what GoPro is today. So uh, you took off to Indonesia, um, you went surfing with your camera and it actually worked. Yeah, it was, it was phenomenal, but I had to be very careful where I surfed with it because I, I knew that I had something patentable, so I would only take it out when I was in remote areas and um, yeah, I had to be, it was pretty funny though because one time I was surfing with it, I wasn't expecting anybody else to show up and um, Tom Carroll, a world champion surfer, happened to paddle out <laughs> into the lineup and ask me, hey, what's that? And I said, oh, it's my camera, can I take a photo of you? So, uh, because at this point you were taking pictures. Uh, only pictures. Yes, and uh, yeah, it wasn't until 2007 when YouTube became such a phenomena that people started asking, what is the video quality of a GoPro versus uh, the photo quality? And uh, you know, we, we had so much luck. We've had so much luck at GoPro. People like, one day, if I have the time, I wanna write a book called uh, Nobody's That Smart. <laughs> and it's about all of the, the incredible, lucky turn of events we've experienced at GoPro that's led it to become what it is today, which is uh, the best-selling camera in the world outside of the Asian markets. So it's, it's a dream come true. So you came back, you started developing the product and you reached your first goal, which was uh, selling uh, the GoPro at surf shops, right? Yeah, I, 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 came, I came back <coughs> and I, I recognized that uh, for me to start the business, I needed to completely dedicate myself to it. Um, and so I moved uh, back in uh, with my father he lived just north of San Francisco in, a, in Sausalito, a little town. And um, I went to work on my idea for GoPro seven days a week, 18 hours a day for two years. And um, I maybe went a little bit overboard 
but passion is really important. And I threw myself at it uh, as though it was an art project. I was a visual arts major in uh, school at UC San Diego, and I had no idea how to start a business like this, but I decided to just treat it like it was a, a, a visual arts project. Everything from the product design to the packaging to the advertisements we ran in the early days to the name of it, GoPro. Um, it was really just a big art project. And so when I, and this is a good lesson, when you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're trying to do something in business that you have no experience with, just try to relate it to other things that you do have experience with. You know, everything, everything is relative and you can find parallels in everything. And common sense will get you a really long way. I mean, the fact that I'm sitting here right now, you know, GoPro is really built on passion, common sense, and the dedication to execute and to stick with it. Um, it's not rocket science. And, and, and uh, I think that that's one of our greatest, one of my greatest assets, I think, is just stubbornness. I do not give up. And so that allowed me to go to work for two years in my father's home, um, get to the first product that I sold at a surf trade show. We were immediately profitable because we had one employee. I didn't even pay rent, you know? And um, we bootstrapped GoPro from an idea to what it is today um, on a total of $265,000 of capital. And that's one of the things that we're very proud of uh, because it speaks to the organic success of our business model. Um, and also is important uh, illustration that you don't need a ton of money uh, to build a really big business. Some businesses, some industries you do, but um, if, if in typical fashion, if, if somebody was starting GoPro today, they probably would go to venture capitalists in Silicon Valley and say they need $50 million to start the business. And as we've proven, that's just not the case. So uh, you built your business uh, in parallel with YouTube. Uh, and uh, for some reason, we like filming ourselves and sharing it. Um, why is that? Why do people like that so much? Well, I think this gets back to passion. Um, every, uh, and this goes a bit deeper than business here for a second, but bear with me. Every human has a passion and an interest like a fingerprint. And our passions and interests are all different. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why do we have passions, right? And I, I've, my experience with GoPro has, and, and when I think about my own life and how it is that I'm sitting here today, I recognize that I've been fortunate enough uh, to have grown up in a family, in a society that allowed me to pursue my passion. And not everybody gets to. Uh, and that's something that's really important uh, to me and my wife in our lives is now to leverage the success we've had with GoPro to hopefully help other people realize their passions and fully realize themselves as a person. Uh, but I think that passion uh, is important because it gets you out of the chair and gets you moving to go do something that you really are interested in. And when you have motion, things happen. Like we talked about, you meet people, you have ideas, it leads to uh, creation and activity that, that one day hopefully help you realize who you are. So I think that our passions are our personal roadmaps to our lives. So pursuing them is very, 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 very important. Um, and I think that why people like to film themselves is I think it's inherent to all people to want to see yourself living out your passions, living out your interests, right? What do you look like moving through this world? Right? And that's a healthy thing. Sometimes people say, oh, well, that's kind of egocentric or narcissistic, but not really if it's, a, if it's positive in nature. So for example, you ski. That's a great way for you to express yourself with everybody here and share your passion for skiing in a socially acceptable way that helps everybody in this room learn more about you. And the more that the world can learn about itself through shared content like that, the more the world can understand itself. And that can only be a good thing. One of my, one of my favorite GoPro videos of all time is, uh, uh, it would have been appropriate to show it here, I wish we had it, is uh, Afghanistan, Afghanistan Ski Movie. 
and uh, a group of teenagers uh, in Afghanistan uh, in 2013 had a GoPro and filmed themselves putting on a ski jump competition in the hills above their town. And they went so far as to sponsor it GoPro. And in the and, and you can find it on YouTube. And it was video. We made it video of the day in February of this year on the on the GoPro channel. And they went so far as to hand paint GoPro banners that they put up around the the ski jump because they wanted to feel as though this was a GoPro sponsored event. And I mean, you can't help but at least at GoPro, we couldn't help but get teary eyed when we watched it. And it's showing us an aspect of life in Afghanistan that you're not seeing through tradi traditional media. Uh, and you're seeing these kids express their passion. And then that promotes a greater sense of understanding about what's happening in another part of the world. And so at GoPro, we like to think that we're helping the world communicate in a new way, express itself visually in a new way, in, in the form of compelling, engaging content that other people actually want to watch. And you know, it's, 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 it's very meaningful to us. We um, are, um, are, the theme today is, is uh, entrepreneurship uh, and uh, innovation. Uh, and you started out for two years uh, doing everything yourself, uh, mm -hmm. living uh, at your father's place. Um, now you're leading a, a, a big company. Uh, there's a, a lot of people um, that are uh, on your team. Um, obviously, uh, developing uh, your product, coming up with new ideas is important. Uh, how do you manage innovation? Is it difficult for you that you used to do it all yourself and you know where you want to go with it? Uh, is it difficult to, to sort of give enough freedom and how do you manage innovation? Well, I think, Again, not to beat a dead horse, but this is where passion comes into it, <laughs> is because when you're fortunate enough to have your, your business, your work, your centered around your passion, it comes naturally to you. Uh, so people ask, uh, where do you and your team come up with all these ideas? And the truth is, is that every day we're working on subject matter that we just inherently love. Right? Developing these incredible uh, capture devices and accessories to help the world capture itself from any perspective possible. You know, and now you see GoPros being mounted on drones and capturing, you know, aerial views of life. And drones will one day be following you down the ski mountain, so we can better uh, dissect why you fell, because it won't just be from your perspective; it'll also be, you know, from behind you and whatnot. And this is. I mean, this is so much fun to be working in this field. So that's where the innovation and ideas come from, I think, is because we're so passionately involved in our business that we have insights that other people may not have. So let's say you're one of our competitors and you just, your, your upper management one day said, hey, GoPro has identified a really great market opportunity. We should go compete with them. The people that are on that team are not necessarily passionate about this subject matter, right? They've been given a task and they need to go and execute on it. But if, if building little wearable mountable cameras and accessories is not something that is like what they really want to do in life, then it's difficult for them to put in the emotion, the energy, the passion that will lead to insights as to what will make the next great, great product. Uh, and that comes naturally to us. And that's helped us attract like-minded people into the organization who share our passion. And that makes it easy to hand off and delegate and, and frankly, be blown away by the great ideas that our team has. Because again, nobody's that smart. You need a lot of other fabulous people in the room. And what's, what's wonderful for me is I get to come in every day and sit down with incredibly talented engineers and they just share their amazing ideas and they came to work at GoPro because they care about what we do. So th another really important aspect of GoPro success is the incredible culture that we have and our ability to attract like-minded yet broad-minded people who really want to come and work on helping the world capture and share incredible life experiences like this. 
Big Women, you're gonna um, also be here a bit later on when we have the little panel, so it will be open for questions uh, at that point. Uh, thank you very much for coming uh, and giving us your insights. Uh, it was great having you.